During the 1990s, there was no other fighter of Mike Tyson's caliber. This brave man in the ring had earned his prestige after proving himself to be a lethal knockout machine at the end of the previous decade. As a result, challengers kept lining up to fight him, hoping to defeat a living legend. However, the audience attended these matches under the illusion of seeing the mighty Mike Tyson mercilessly destroy his opponents. Welcome. In today's video, we'll relive one of the most brutal fights in Iron Mike's career. I advise discretion. The images you are about to see may disturb you a bit. With that warning in place, let's get started. It was early 1991 and the idol Mike Tyson had a new name on his list of victims. Donovan Ruddock. Ruddock was a Canadian giant, almost two meters tall, who intimidated anyone with his mere presence. Anyone except Mike Tyson. The native of Weston, Ontario debuted in professional boxing on March 20th, 1982, fighting only a few battles, remaining undefeated until April 1985. In the following years, the fighter applied the quality, not quantity rule to fight only a few matches, accumulating an undeniably impressive winning streak. This same streak qualified him in 1991 to face one of his greatest challenges yet, the beast Iron Mike. Known as Razor for cutting through everything in his path, Ruddock accepted the opportunity of a lifetime without hesitation. Ruddock entered the fight as the number two heavyweight contender for the World Boxing Council, the World Boxing Association, and the International Boxing Federation. A great achievement, but one that pales when we look at the number one heavyweight contender spot in those same organizations, occupied by none other than Mike Tyson. The fight was scheduled for March 18th as a heavyweight eliminator. The winner would undoubtedly become the man to beat in that weight class. Jerry Roth, Chuck Giampa, and Dave Moretti were appointed as judges for the bout, but their views wouldn't be needed. In the ring of the Mirage Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, the third man would be the legendary Richard Steele. First round Tyson jumped from his corner with the aggression that characterized him in that era. Measuring Ruddick with his left, he sought to unleash his right on him immediately. For his part, the Canadian giant also tried to subdue Tyson with his own attacks. The clash of both forces led to the first clinches, which lasted throughout the round. It wasn't the first time Tyson had faced a giant, and he knew he had to attack the body to weaken him before going for his head. However, Ruddick was making the job as difficult as possible. With so many clinches, it was hard to land precise attacks. Second round. As soon as the opening bell of the second round was heard, Tyson jumped on Ruddick. It seemed that the Canadian giant wanted to avoid a close exchange of blows as he kept retreating in an attempt to stay away from Mike. When you fight with cowardice, only the worst can happen to you. Within seconds of starting, Ruddick was down on the canvas. Although Tyson's punch hadn't been decisive, the giant's retreat caused him to lose his balance. Ruddick was on his feet even before Steele began the safety count, showing great confusion and disbelief at what had just happened. After the mandatory eight count, the fight resumed. Mike Tyson was the clear aggressor, and Ruddick relied on clinching to try to quell his offense. Tyson could only land two punches before Ruddick's arms sought to grab any part of his body. Occasionally, the Canadian giant would throw one or two punches just to remind the audience that he was still in the fight. After this first knockdown, it became evident that Ruddick's fighting spirit had left his body. Third round. Trying to repeat the previous round's start, Tyson jumped on a retreating Ruddick once again. Tyson had to be creative and try to land blows even in the clinches. Suddenly, Ruddick started using his left hand only to try to keep Tyson at bay. The Canadian giant wasn't attacking, and this defensive posture would bring a second major consequence. Tyson continued to attack the body during the clinches until Ruddick was down again.
With 20 seconds left in the round, Ruddick got involved in an attack that wouldn't seriously hurt Tyson, but would open up his guard. Less than five seconds before he was saved by the bell, a powerful left hook caused the giant to lose his balance once more and fall back violently to the canvas. When he got up, Ruddick's expression was pure gold. It was a mix of astonishment and disbelief. He looked around as if thinking, did this really happen again? While Steele gave him the safety count for the second time in three rounds, he was on his feet by the count of eight and was finally saved by the bell. Ruddick needed to use this break between rounds to rethink his strategy if he didn't want the third time to be the charm. Fourth round Tyson, staying true to his style, attacked Ruddick as soon as the bell rang. But Ruddick didn't hesitate for a second to cling to his body. The Canadian giant used his left hand to try to keep at a distance the man who had already become his executioner. But Mike had a special talent for breaking through his guard and continuing to hurt him with sadistic body shots. After a minute of repetitive movements, it became evident that Ruddick was just buying time. Retreat, clinch, and repeat was the plan. Even after four rounds, Donovan Ruddick had no idea how to face a rival of Iron Mike's caliber, and he was paying the price for it. Fifth round Tyson's right hand continued to explode against Ruddick's jaw at the start of the fifth round. The Canadian giant's posture momentarily transformed. He was attacking again, although his attacks weren't the most effective. As a result, he soon reverted to what had helped him survive the previous round without hitting the canvas, clinching. Tyson's offense only grew stronger as Ruddick failed to counter it. Probably the only thing keeping him on his feet was his good physical condition and aptitude for the sport. Still, after the closing bell, he looked exhausted and reluctant to continue fighting. Sixth round. I'm not having fun tonight, would be the Lady Gaga quote that Ruddick would surely frame the fight with. The Canadian giant had lost all sense of fighting since that devastating second knockdown. During the sixth round, he shamelessly fled backward or sideways whenever Tyson tried to approach him. If they were facing each other, he would only extend his left hand to try to keep his distance. When he couldn't, he resorted to clinching, as he had done so many times before. With Tyson controlling the pace of the fight, having subdued another giant, the question remained of how much more time Donovan Ruddick could buy. With the exchange of blows during the last minute of the round, the answer was just around the corner. Seventh round Tyson was tired of playing and went for the giant's head from the first second. Ruddick didn't want to allow him to attack, betting on his classic clinching. But when he dared to throw a combination, opening his guard, Tyson came in with the heavy artillery. A right hook left Ruddick staggering but he was still on his feet. Against the ropes, a left uppercut began the final punishment. Left, right, left, right. And Ruddick's head couldn't stop moving from side to side, making his whole body dance. After this grim scene, Richard Steele raised his arms and ended the fight. Ruddick seemed not even to have realized what had happened just a few seconds ago, but this outcome was inevitable. Mike Tyson had beaten him by technical knockout at two minutes and 22 seconds of the seventh round. If you've made it this far, thank you. Remember, the best way to support my content is by leaving a like on the video. Did you know that Mike Tyson fought Donovan Ruddick again just a few months later? Would you like to revisit that fight? Let me know in the comments.